access. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our speakers today. First, uh, Daniel Milam. He is a prof in uh, critical care and health care at Université du Québec à Rimouski at the Levy campus. Daniel has a PhD in nursing science at Université Laval, and he's mainly interested in the process of uh, clinical auditing and surveillance and the, the uh, virtual environment for training and research on healthcare professionals. Uh, Manon Daigle, she is a nurse and teacher in critical care at the Department of Healthcare at Université du Québec à Rimouski, campus de Rimouski. She is a doctoral candidate in research in healthcare with a concentration in pedagogy of healthcare at Université du, uh, de Sherbrooke. She's interested in development and evaluation of skills, innovation in pedagogy, and pedagogy related to healthcare, notably uh, clinical simulations. I wish you a wonderful webinar, and I hand it over to Danielle and Manon. Perfect. Hello. Uh, hello, Madam uh, Pejo. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm very happy to be with you today and with Manon to present this wonderful project of a virtual uh, uh, care unit that we've been working on since 2018. It's a project that uh, seeks to collaborate for better training. So that's the title of the presentation. So just before we get into things, uh, I just uh, wanted to thank all our partners, uh, UCAR, uh, uh, Ministère de l'Éducation euh, 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 supérieure, Université du Québec, U4, Centre de l'Appalache, Centre de recherche de l'Appalache, Laboratoire Amérique et Laboratoire Corsair, so the policy for research and healthcare in the Quebec region. So Manon will control the presentation, so we'll ask Manon to change the slides. So Manon, please uh, go ahead. Yes, does everybody see everything? Yes, if you just want to introduce yourself, uh, Manon. Yes, I am Manon Daigle. Madame Perrault introduced me already. I am a prof uh, at the Rimouski campus in the nursing sciences, and I'm interested in everything around simulation. The project of uh, virtual uh, care is very much aligned with my interests. Perfect. Thank you, Manon. We will begin with uh, changing slides. If you can just move this slide forward. The objective of the presentation First, we will present the virtual uh, care unit. So what is it? Uh, in immersive VR, I'm going to present the result of the collaborative uh, research so that is uh, that seeks to develop uh, video uh, videos uh, in simula simulation situations and uh, simulations we give in the uh, virtual uh, unit for care. So uh, change slides. For the plan of the presentation, it's pretty simple presentation of the uh, outset of the project of the uh, care unit and the phases of development. We're going to explain how we proceeded and how we proceeded since 2018 to uh, uh, implement this project that has uh, a lot of advantages, but a lot of challenges as well. So the presentation of the project of video uh, presentations, short videos and uh, VR as, uh, with, related to uh, VR scenarios as a, a part of the project of this uh, virtual unit of care. We had one modality only, We then we added two, and then uh, a second one and a third one, videos uh, that uh, are sourced in uh, v uh, VR scenarios. So we're going to present that. And also, we're going to talk about the issues and the uh, successes uh, of this project. Because a project of this scale, yes, there's a lot of advantages. There's a lot of uh, opportunities. But uh, uh, it's a very collegiate project for colleges and universities. But there's also uh, the uh, challenges. So we're going to talk uh, about that uh, as well for the short uh, video capsules, but also the uh, uh, project in general. So we will go to the next slide to talk about the genesis of the project and the phases of development. In the beginning, uh, the unit, uh, virtual unit of care came into existence in 2017 during a family dinner uh, where I learned that VR existed. And uh, in uh, 2017, my uh, nephew said, come see, come see this. Uh, come to the basement and I'm going to show you VR. I had never tried it out. And then uh, it hit me and I really got inspired. And immediately I saw that there was something we could use here, some uh, 
uh, use in uh, uh, nursing care because we have a theoretical part and the theoretical part that uh, the foundation of uh, uh, to teach the foundations of critical uh, care in terms of uh, the foundations of nursing and how you work in critical care units. So a much more theoretical view on things. So parallel to that, there's also a practical part, a practical part, uh, a theoretical part, simulations uh, with uh, uh, different aspects with different mannequins and tools. We have some labs uh, uh, for the practice part, the concrete part, so that we can teach the foundations of clinical practice, but simulations in different ways with mannequins, for example. So we have the practical part, the theoretical part. And what we saw is that in the uh, internship in critical care, because the students have a uh, internship uh, uh, as part of their courses for the bachelor's uh, degree. So I saw that the students had difficulty to apply the theory uh, and the uh, uh, the process of uh, critical uh, care and the uh, auditing and surveillance and all that in the uh, internship. And so I saw that I started to teach the internship in 2005. And I saw that independently of what we did, we all, always had difficulty with the students that went into internship. They often had difficulty uh, uh, following decision creed, uh, the uh, uh, complex components and the reasoning and the process. And uh, I, I saw that there was a problem with the surveillance process. So I had this idea of uh, the uh, 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 intensive care uh, virtual unit. And uh, so it was to train the students before uh, their arrival into internship to expose them to a clinical situation that is very authentic, that is real. So an authentic real scenario that uh, virtual reality scenario that uh, to facilitate the transition between theory and practice. And so when uh, came the time to implement this idea of this unit of care, virtual unit of care around 2017, uh, around the holidays, I started to think about it. And I started to work with Frédéric Barville, who was working in VR at the time. And uh, so I talked about my preoccupations with the internship and I was telling them there's something we can do. I have this idea. I want to develop a virtual unit of care uh, using VR. It was an innovative idea at the time. So seven years ago. And so the idea was to have a pedagogical view on things, but a scientifically informed point of view as well. So we had a research part that is quite developed. And so I wanted to have a point of view, a pedagogical view to edu educate the students before the internship to have this idea, this feeling that they were already uh, uh, on, in the field, that they've already had some experience without having actually been out in the field. So to train nurses to deploy uh, mental and uh, actions in a controlled environment. So uh, uh, processes, mental process, and, and so the controlled part is very important. Why? Because we want the students to be able to uh, make mistakes, to correct their mistakes so that we can see uh, that there are some problems that exist in the decision making process without consequence on the patient. So all this from the point of view of science to be able to analyze the behavior, to be able to study, research it, and to look at the different characteristics that we have in the virtual care unit, to be able to analyze the behavioral cognitive uh, uh, functions. Uh, so that's where the uh, virtual unit of care came into being in March 2018, where the first uh, trial, the first test happened. So we're going to uh, move forward here on the slides. It's a collaborative project. The uh, virtual uh, uh, unit of care is not just a simulation. It's a collaborative project upon which each partner comes and contributes to be able to grow the project. So in other words, it's a societal project in which each of the uh, parts, whether it be universities, colleges, uh, clinical environment, uh, where it could also be international, for example, where we have uh, schools in Switzerland, France, Belgium, Luxembourg, Switzerland, that uh, help us to develop scenarios, validate scenarios, help us with funding to uh, support our work and then be able to benefit from our research and uh, what we develop. So it's not just a simulator. I always say that the virtual unit of care is a kind of a potluck where each person 
uh, contributes to the buffet where we all eat together. So it's really a collaborative living project. And so it's the main strength of this project is to bring together the different stakeholders, clinical environments, colleges, universities, and people uh, internationally as well. So if you can just uh, change slides in the spring 2024, when we started to present uh, at the IQPC, at the IQPC con uh, conference, we always had these different parts. So we, uh, the same thing here, what we should see here is that the unit of care started with a, a sense of care unit in 2018. In 2020, 2021, we transformed uh, the virtual uh, unit of care and uh, 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 intensive care into virtual unit of care. We had not only intensive care, but we also had emergency uh, care, intensive care, obstetrics, obstet obstet gerontology, to be able to uh, collaborate with professionals, oncology and palliative care, medicine, surgery, and mental health as well. So. Uh, at this time in 2024, the fall 2024, the virtual unit of care, we're talking about five floors plus a, 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 a urgent emergency unit where we have 15, 16 scenarios. So in VR, in immersive VR. So at the end of the day, we're developing a working environment where we expose the students, the professionals to come and uh, uh, experience authentic clinical situations in uh, virtual reality. So if we change slides uh, here, if I give you a timeline in 2018, we've developed critical care where we have six scenarios. And then we continued in 2022 up to 2022, we had a subsidy from the Minister of Econom Economics and Innovation to develop two scenarios in obstetrics and gynecology, and uh, one scenario that is this, uh, the fetal heart deceleration and one on the neonatal uh, uh, reanimation, uh, on the reanimation of a uh, neonatal uh, uh, child. So in 2022, we had the two scenarios that we've done in collaboration with the Université Laval to develop the foundation of the uh, uh, collaboration, interprofessional collaboration in, med in medicine and external medicine and specialized medicine and a bachelor degree students for uh, nursing. So in these scenarios, we see the foundation of the inter interprofessional collaboration. We're talking about 2023 now, where we had a subsidy from Assist Chaudière Appalaches, the research center, Fondation Hotel Dieu Levy, to develop a scenario in oncology, and we had another subsidy uh, uh, that was a bit smaller, but to develop a scenario for palliative care, which uh, makes it so that uh, oncology is palliative care for us, the same patient where her uh, state has deteriorated and she st decided to stop chemotherapy. And then in 2024, 2025, we are working on general care with Cégep Virtuel, which is a, a loyal partner at the uh, college network, Cégep Network, to develop three scenarios, uh, where we have three scenarios in general care and two that are coming and the, the cultural secure, uh, security. And so these are scenarios that are very important uh, for uh, taking charge of patients from uh, different cultures and be able to uh, uh, showcase uh, unconscious biases that may appear as a healthcare professional. So right now, we, in 2024, 2026, we are working with UCAT for Code Orange and the international aspect of it and the different partners. We are about 25 people and the Kylet project of 25 people to develop a scenario Code Orange in a VR uh, scenario to facilitate the exposure of uh, the personnel and students as well and facilitate the task of teachers at the college level at uh, in clinical environments as well. So. Uh, a lot of different scenarios, many that are completed. Now we are working on three scenarios simultaneously as we speak for 2024 to 2020, uh, end of 2025 approximately. So we're going to go to the next slide to show you what the unit of care looks like. We prepared a short video that you can watch. I hope it doesn't lag too much. It happens sometimes, but uh, I will let you watch the video and we can uh, talk about that.
immersion into a clinical environment. Learning cardiac arrhythmia. Development of skills and clinical surveillance. Emergency interventions. Discussions about ethical issues. Obstetric, uh, obstetricians, OBGYN. Management of instability in situations of obstetrics. Of OBGYN. Gerontology. Geriatry. So intra and interprofessional collaboration. Managing instability in chemotherapy. Thank you, Manon. So we will... Uh... So what we can say here is that we've seen the presentation, the short video, uh, uh, so that presents the three uh, pedagogical modalities because the project has grown in time through uh, the last years so that we're talking about immersive uh, VR and we are developing with the VR headset. But to facilitate the transposition and transposing this and deploying it with different partners and people that can be uncomfortable with cyber uh, uh, equipment and uh, use of technology. So we've developed a non-immersive mode. So a uh, mouse and keyboard mode that allows you to do the exact same scenarios with the similar interactions, but on a flat screen. So it's a three-dimensional environment, but rendered on a normal screen. So the objective is that you can use it on any uh, computer so we are working very hard to optimize the scripts, the development, the animation uh, modules so that it works uh, on uh, a basic uh, computer and normal laptop. But we also have the uh, video capture mode or video capsule mode, which uh, is, uh, uh, was born about two years ago. And um, to access uh, to knowledge, and that's how... We worked very closely with uh, Virtual Cegep, uh, Cegep Virtual to develop this part of the video capture video capsules to be able to facilitate the exposure to people who had more difficulty with technology. So Manon will be able to explain uh, in a few seconds uh, what the video capsules uh, uh, consist of. She's a very strong ally uh, in that department because she has... Uh, uh, a lot of that work on her shoulders. So she really helps uh, with that. So she'll be able to cover the video part, how we work and what we do with the short video capsules. So I just uh, want to understand what we see here. We saw a baby that was intubated. Is it a student who does the simulation? Yes, exactly. The students will do the simulations and the environment, the system will record each of the actions. 
and all the parameters, then there will be a report that says you've done this and this, and you did this in this order, and we will see everything with the teacher that will be able to go over all the actions in the simulator to be able to give feedback with the students and uh, look at everything that has been done. Yes, so to answer your question, yes, there are these students uh, who uh, we use it currently at uh, University, UCAD, Levy, uh, uh, UCAD, we also use these simulations uh, with groups of students. So supposing the intubation is really not done correctly, do we see the impact right away? Yes, uh, exactly. In the case of an intubation, it's not uh, uh, as direct as the simulator decides. Everything is in the decision making. It's not the student who will do the, intub the intubation. He will decide that the tube has to be put in. And then he will make that decision to ask for oxygen, to increase uh, positive uh, uh, pressure ventilation, to reduce oxygen. Well, he will make these decisions. The system will react. And so, for example, you will see the uh, raised cardiac frequency. And so we uh, see the consequences of our actions. And that's the part of the beauty part of VR. So we can see immediate reactions uh, uh, to the actions undertaken. Thank you. So if we change slides, Manon. So the uh, project for video capsules, uh, starting with uh, VR scenarios. So. So just to say that we had certain collaborations that were very important in video captured video capsules. I reiterate, Cégep Virtuel, José Leblanc, who really helped uh, a lot. Uh, so to help us to develop this, uh, to develop the uh, video capture, that was very important. We have to think also that Manon will explain it, but also the video uh, capsules are available on uh, the Pavillon uh, are free uh, use. You just have to give the source, but uh, you to, but people can use them or use them for quizzes, use this material to create or co-create uh, in uh, their teaching environment. So Cégep Virtuel, we uh, would like to thank the uh, Minister of Higher Education who believed in this project to create uh, video capsules to be able to share that widely everywhere on the web. So uh, these are available. We also have UCAT, who are very precious partners since 2020, but the last year specifically, there was a lot of collaboration with 3D animation. They helped us a lot with that. And UCAR and all the uh, people who believed in this project from the outset. So uh, for video capture, UCAR played an important role. And so, Manon, I will let you continue with the team and I will let you continue to the end if you wish. Mm, do you hear? I can't hear you. Do you hear Manon? No. No, we don't hear you, Mano. I can continue. Would it be possible to answer the questions uh, while we're waiting? Yes. Okay. So Simon Labrec was asking, is it possible, would it be possible one day to use scenarios, exterior scenarios, other than the uh, virtual unit of care, like ambulance, for example, or something outside the clinical environment. Yes, the way the project was built and the way the project was put together and built this way, and it's very important for us, is that it's a technology that we'll be able to use in other uh, uh, theaters and other uh, ways. So we already do this uh, with the different environments, uh, immersive environment, the immersive virtual school. We are building a school in VR uh, immersive reality built on the technology we use in the virtual unit of care. So we are developing a school, a virtual school for children uh, that are on the autism spectrum and uh, the classroom management in this kind of situation with the educational sciences in UCAM. We're working with them to develop scenarios in VR, to not in a hospital, but in a school. And we use the same technology. So to answer your question, yes, it exists. It's doable. It's possible. 
it's always questions of funding, but uh, it's uh, possible. And the unit of care is constituted in this way so that we can reuse the technology in different ways. Interesting. Uh, Dominique Poirier, I don't know if Manon, your microphone is working or not. Yes, we'll do a test. Perfect. So we'll take the next question uh, later on. Uh, uh, yes, perfect. Sorry. So as I was saying, uh, to put together this project with video capture and to mobilize a team, a multidisciplinary team, uh, there's Danielle and myself. Uh, we also have an AV technician who is very precious to us because we're experts in pedagogy and uh, nursing, but in AV and technology, we are still learning and uh, <laughs> So uh, using our skills, so our AV technician is very precious to us. We also have uh, a uh, pedagogical counselor, an educational counselor. We talked about Jose earlier, uh, very precious to us at Cégep Virtuel. We also have a teacher in uh, uh, nursing sciences at Cégep de Shawinigan and Frédéric Banville, who is a very important team member who is a prof at UCAR, who is uh, a teacher at the Unité uh, Virtuelle de Soins, a virtual care unit. So why did we choose to do video capsules, video uh, clips uh, with the different scenarios from VR? So we're, it's one of the modalities that is original, that is captive, that allows us to connect the real world and the VR world. We showed you earlier with the video, but uh, how we uh, build a different scenarios. So we're connecting the VR world and the real world with these videos and trying to replicate an environment, a clinical environment with a high level of authenticity and a virtual uh, unit of care. One of the objectives is to replicate a authentic clinical environment to develop and to build skills. So the videos help us to do that. Other also, it's accessible with computers, telephones, uh, smartphones, and tablets. So it's a, a flexible means of access. The uh, capsules, video clips will be integrated in different uh, ways with the uh, different strategies uh, for education. Uh, so whether it be distance education or uh, in the classroom. So there's free use uh, uh, under creative license. And so it uh, makes it so that the uh, personnel can adapt uh, these tools with regards to their pedagogical objectives and their constraints uh, as well. Uh, so the it's a video capsules that allow us to reach the clientele that is varied, whether it be in uh, technical uh, deck, uh, 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 different levels of study, bachelor's degree, adult education, and these video uh, clips can be used in different environments and different uh, training environments and educational environments uh, for uh, nursing and healthcare. So when we're developing this project, when we started to do this, we had to consider many elements to for the criteria for these video clips on the Rennes Pavillon, on the uh, Rennes page, which is the page for resources that to, to create 10 video clips, uh, video capsules. It's I think it's 10. You'll correct me if I'm wrong. We had criteria uh, that we had to follow. So first we had criteria in terms of technology. The video uh, clips had to be accessible easily without pre-registering it had to be easy to find with the uh, uh, google and other uh, browsers and there are also some uh, privacy and security considerations accessibility of people uh, to the uh, video clips and uh, um, also the video clips should be adapted to the different uses to a computer a smartphone a tablet should be able to be used everywhere so also the linguistic component the vocabulary should be adapted to the pedagogical context and the narration uh, should be in neutral french to uh, reflect the jargon and medical jargon as well and the videos should also be subtitled but the from the pedagogical aspects of it the content should be flexible easily adaptable to allow usage in different contexts different pedagogical approaches the frequency also should be flexible a student that 
sees the video number three doesn't necessarily uh, perturb the fact that he wants to watch the videos in a different order. There's a flexibility there. Also to have autonomous access without having to go through the teacher. So free use for everybody. Uh, they should be free use for everybody, downloadable, shareable with a website through all the different uh, colleges, the teachers and students, and uh, with remixing rights and integration rights uh, into a digital environment. All of that uh, in respecting intellectual property and the conditions that are uh, applicable by the creative uh, license use creative use license so uh the uh, to be able to update our videos uh in uh, to changing technology and conditions so in terms of inclusion we had to respect criteria around cultural diversity and uh, uh gender diversity as well so uh after having considered all these constraints and the conditions we looked at the visual part of the uh videos and we needed something transferable to all different uh, channels. So our uh, technologists that worked with us at the beginning really worked at the graphic elements of this. We had to standardize the colors, integration of the logos, and uh, to uh, present the, the licenses for use and everything. So we also created uh, some banners to animate our uh, capsules. We had some visual aspects that we wanted to integrate, visual tools to make sense of the... Uh, pedagogical objectives and to also keep the people captivated and interested uh, in the uh, video clips. Clap, uh, uh, so the, the pro uh, clinical surveillance process, for example, created different uh, uh, banners that integrate into different uh, parts of the video. For example, to uh, uh, talk about the de detecting issues. So uh, for example, uh, detecting a, a decision making point an inflection point where we have to make a decision that's part of the clinical reasoning process so again when we want to uh, mention uh, correct and best practices used by the people in the video we do that as well so at this juncture i have to say that sometimes we use these banners to do a bit of camouflage to hide some imperfections that we see in editing so these uh our precious tools that save us these banners instead of having to redo some parts of the video. So to talk about the different scenarios before each video, we have a scenario uh, to uh, direct our videos. So uh, first, uh, the pyramid, the Freytag pyramid, that helps us to structure our intervention to be able to keep the participants captivated and interested. So uh, then the concepts that come from the uh, process for clinical surveillance from Danielle, uh, this uh, clinical theory that Danielle had elaborated in his doctoral study. So this model served as a foundation to build different scenarios and uh, uh, the uh, uh, surveillance uh, process and uh, clinical surveillance. And so we also uh, looked at the uh, uh, International Nursing Association for Clinical Simulation and Learning of the, using their standards uh, for VR and a bit of a debriefing at the end of each video. So the videos have the same format. They start with an introduction that we can compare as a pre or to a pre-briefing in the simulation context with mannequins and VR. So in our introduction, a, a nurse uh, plays their role and uh, presents the situation and all the important information to situate the person so uh, that the person can have a clear vision of the situation and start to initiate uh, their clinical surveillance processes. So then, our uh, uh, person goes into VR where he has to deploy the clinical surveillance process and the clinical reasoning process in this situation. That's where the different scenarios where we put them together with regards to the Freetag pyramid that I was talking about earlier. So the 
intrigue happens in real time in virtual reality. And in conclusion, it ends with a debriefing discussion that is similar to a debriefing situation in a clinical environment where we mention the elements of, that are important with the decision-making process, the surveillance process, and that ends the video. So we have different videos, uh, about 15 minutes long, to uh, uh, respect uh, uh, pedagogical principles. So when we see that a, a video will be a bit longer, we divide it into two parts, part one and part two, two different uh, uh, videos. Uh, for example, the post-operation clinical surveillance uh, and it was too long, so we had to separate it into two parts, and we had difficulty choosing what to put it all into one uh, video. So we decided to uh, separate it into two uh, videos, and that allows us to have uh, videos that uh, are easily digestible and that are not too long. So uh, when we began our first video, uh, we didn't know exactly how to do things. There wasn't a lot of instructions, uh, not a lot of guide on how to create, create scenarios and videos uh, uh, starting from VR uh, scenarios. So through the learning and uh, through uh, trial and error, we created a method uh, the six parts. Uh, so in the beginning, what we do is we select a base case with the different scenarios that are available in the unit of care, but also depending on what was requested and what we've proposed in the uh, subsidy. So there are certain conditions we have to meet. So identify the pedagogical objectives through uh, what we want to do with this video. And there's a person who writes the first draft of the scenario. So uh, depending on the uh, script that we're comfortable with, he will do the first draft or I will do the first draft of a scenario. Then the scenario is validated by the rest of the team to make sure of the validity of the content and that uh, it uh, makes sense pedagogically. At that juncture, we uh, already know when we're going to integrate banners, information, visual aspects to uh, complete the uh, information so that the participants can follow the uh, script and uh, reach the objective. So the uh, version three, version four, after many versions, we uh, get to a final version. And then we plan the filming, we find our actors who will play our nurses, and we also find some play actors to record, do the voiceovers for the VR. I would say that in time, we've learned that it's very important to prepare our uh, uh, actors and to go over the scenario and to practice and to make sure that the uh, uh, tone of voice and everything comes through uh, with fidelity. So, uh, so uh, also uh, we do the editing with uh, our uh, AV technician, and uh, with the uh, filming, we make sure that we are there, myself and Danielle, one or both, to make sure that everything runs smoothly. That's very important because we know the scenario very well. So sometimes we plan to do things a certain way, but things change uh, uh, on the fly. And maybe we should do it from this point of view or say it in this way or in that way. It's not as clear uh, when we, uh, uh, then it's better this way than when we wrote it. So some things change in time uh, and on the fly. So the technician sends us a first version after editing. And then we do the animation with the visual aspects, banners, and other strategies to keep the participants interested and uh, engaged. And we revalidate and we check and recheck to make sure we have a final project, a product where the subtitling is still to be done. And we do the last checks with the team. And then we deploy it on the platform for everybody to see and use. So uh, what we see here is in time the videos that are on the REN platform. These are videos that were filmed with scenarios that already existed in UVS, uh, in the virtual uh, care unit. So when we ask for uh, new VR uh, scenarios, we 
uh, keep in mind that we're going to do a video. So that changes the way uh, we work. Um, so what happens is uh, with our scenario, we have a video uh, related to it. So we pay special attention to the language, to what people will say, how they will move to be able to use that in the video capture and uh, st uh, not having to do extra uh, filming and to have to uh, reinvent part of the scenario. So that saves us time, helps us to create uh, scenarios and for a better integration of uh, our uh, characters in uh, VR and uh, in our videos. So the next scenarios, the ones that will come out soon, were really conceived differently. So I don't know, Danielle, if you want to complete uh, anything on this point, but it's a very iterative process. So the videos are all on the REN uh, page. Uh, on the REN page. And so the different uh, videos, you can see them here. We have a, uh, one on clinical surveillance, others on post-operational surveillance, uh, on reanimation, uh, chemotherapy, and others uh, on clinical collaboration, interpersonal collaboration. So there's other videos that are coming. Uh, we are expecting them for the end of October, beginning of November. They're close to being published. We have new videos uh, also uh, uh, that uh, cover many aspects of uh, clinical uh, care and uh, the clinical surveillance process uh, 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 in a clinically distressed situation. So we have the, the different uh, scenarios the, to develop skills for cultural security and healthcare. The first uh, scenario uh, developed with Sejeb de Rimouski, where we received a subsidy from Paul de l'Est in uh, higher education. And starting with this scenario, we received subsidies from the government to develop four more scenarios that really cover the clinical reasoning of a student in a collegial, in a collegial uh, context but also developing skills in clinical securization and, cl and cultural security uh, as well. So uh, I'm going to show you a short video to give you a short uh, overview of what uh, these videos look like when we connect the real world with the virtual world. Oh, you're there. Hello, my name is Marie-Claire. I am a nurse at uh, the intensive care at VS for seven years. When the nurse recognizes people at risk and detect potential danger and puts uh, in place interventions to reduce risk, they use their senses to detect variations of the situation in time to discuss uh, the situation of Madame Juliette Gagnon. It's been about two weeks that she arrived here and she has a lot of history of health problems. She's diabetic. She has hypertension. Her uh, son, Monsieur Louis Tremblay, is present with us here today. Uh, uh, the uh, cancer uh, that uh, reaches the liver after the breast uh, cancer treatment. So I invite you to accompany uh, me in my intervention with Madame Sanson. Come with me. Then pre-medication as prescribed. I make sure that the uh, settings are respected to minimize risk of contact with uh, 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 use uh, gloves and uh, a uh, frock and to uh, manipulate the machinery every 15 minutes. I, I, uh, I forgot to mention that the patient was uh, suffering and that the uh, bandage was uh, uh, dirty 70%. So this was an important uh, information uh, for the doctor to make the right decision. So the situation is deteriorating. The uh, uh, bandage is 70% uh, soiled and uh, the uh, patient is in hypertension. I forgot to unmute. Can I ask a question? I just want to make sure I understand. There are simulations where the students can participate and they uh, it, take virtual actions, but there are also video capsules that give an overview of what somebody can do or didn't do or should have done. There are two different things. Is that right? 
yes, but starting from the same media, which is the unit for virtual care. So does everybody have access to both kinds of resources? Who has access to that? The video, uh, the videos are available on the REN platform, and that platform is available to all. So all the teachers can have access, the students, the clinicians, it's available, it's open source, everybody can use it. And for the unit of care, the virtual unit of care, the official launch has not been done yet. It should be done progressively in 2025, starting in the summer 2025, where the closest partners will have access, uh, privileged access uh, to validate uh, the beta versions of the simulator. The idea would be that at the end of 2025, we can really have the system uh, go live uh, to be able to connect uh, virtually, remotely, et cetera. So the video capsules, the video clips are already there. We uh, increase the number regularly. There's three coming out soon. We will publish three before the end of October, beginning of November. So the virtual reality simulator right now, these are the, uh, main partners who are testing it right now and doing a beta testing uh, uh, as we speak. So are you thinking about a deployment, uh, a wider scale deployment, or how do you see that? Oh, yes. Well, to answer that, uh, Manon, uh, I can answer that. Maybe we're really going to have different phases of deployment uh, and implementation. So to make sure that we can absorb any potential uh, issues with the technology. And there's also, there's a simulator, but there's also the whole machinery behind it. The, uh, the cybersecurity, uh, uh, access to information, privacy issues, web, all that is built uh, 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 with the simulator. So uh, yes, there'll probably be a deployment that will take uh, different phases where we will deploy progressively before we can get to a full deployment in about 18 months. So that uh, maybe colleges that are interested in the project don't have to uh, uh, rethink everything from the beginning and uh, reinvent the wheel. Well, I don't advise that. With all the work that's been done and all the investment that we've done to bring us here, it wouldn't be a good idea to start from zero to do the exact same thing. That's not a good idea. The idea is to take what we've done and work together and uh, bring this project as far as possible together. So this deployment, is something you're thinking about. There are, yes, uh, we uh, are already uh, uh, at the drawing board to see what the next steps are, the activation, uh, deployment, cybersecurity, everything, data safety, all of that. Sorry, Mano, I'll let you continue. We have 10 minutes left. So yes, we are. We can talk about the different colleges and different scenarios we've developed in collaboration with Sejab de Rimouski will be deployed very soon in November. So we are in the testing phase, but um, so an example of how we can participate with our partners. So I would say that it's a modality that was flexible, the video capsule, the videos, and I will share my experience because uh, in clinical care, uh, so the in a internship, the, uh, the students can really showcase their skills. I want to put them in contact with the activities on the ground that are as, uh, authentic as much as possible. So I wanted to do some activities in a, a remote and non-synchronous way. So I developed activities with our video capsules. I created interactive videos with HMP that you probably already know. It's an extension. Uh, the browser an interactive video to simulate the reasoning process and the clinical situation uh, from these videos. So it's an original way to put the students into a, in a uh, uh, authentic context and the situation of simulation and other uh, activities for simulation with virtual reality. So before closing, Danielle, you said you, know, you met some with some issues and obstacles, but also some uh, uh, best practices throughout this project. So I'm going to go quickly here. So one of the first issues is having the necessary resources. Uh, so to have the uh, human capital that is necessary to uh, uh, complete this project, uh, uh, AV technicians, actors, uh, directors, uh, 
to uh, uh, produce these videos and also to, we see this as an issue, but also a, a victory to develop a fluid method, uh, a fluid process that allowed us to uh, uh, use the strengths uh, of everybody. So we saw that an issue at the beginning, we had to develop a, a method, uh, but we developed a, a method for working together. So one of the traps we fell into at the outset, I think it's important to mention that initially, we wanted to replicate scenarios uh, and transpose them uh, into videos. And we thought that it would be easy and everything will go smoothly. We'll take the VR scenario and make a video out of it. And But it's not exactly what happened because the scenarios in VR are built for clinical immersion where the person is guided and interacts with this virtual reality, where the video is a bit different, the context is different. It's important to adapt uh, uh, pedagogical uh, co uh, co uh, objectives and coherence with the video in, in a classroom setting. So we want to consider the clientele uh, as well, the people who will use it and make it available to everybody. So a heterogeneous user base. And uh, so, we in creation of the different uh, scenarios after in our vr scenarios we have to create a story a scenario and uh, so we can't just transpose that into a video it's not exactly the same so we fell into that trap in the beginning and uh, we uh, had to build things a bit differently Another issue that we met with is to find a common language, a common jargon, uh, where everybody could be on the same page. In uh, nursing, we have uh, our own language, but now uh, working with different AV technicians, different kinds of people who have their own terminology and their own jargon. So I uh, don't know all these terms and they don't know all our terms. So we had to find a common language to communicate efficiently and learn from each other to understand each other and avoid uh, misunderstandings and issues, especially at the video editing stage where we ask uh, for uh, changes. So considering the workload and uh, of everybody, we wanted to uh, make sure that the videos validate the scenarios or we had some uh, issues with some tight uh, uh, deadlines so we know that people are overworked so to, to consider that in our timeline so to, in our making our videos short enough and to consider also our own workload because it takes a lot of time it's very time intensive to put this together we didn't necessarily consider that in the beginning and also to adapt the plans in real time in a vr to uh, we saw that it wasn't that easy and we had to find different environments. We have a lab uh, that uh, looks, uh, uh, is, is, that inspires what we do in VR. So uh, that was an issue to find uh, uh, sets that made sense that we could use and to uh, place our uh, characters in VR. So when we film, we film with a green uh, screen and we take uh, our uh, characters and we put them into the VR so it increases the uh, uh, virtual aspect of the virtual reality uh, 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 capture. So uh, also uh, uh, keeping uh, 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 keeping uh, concentrated on pedagogy was also very important. So can you go a bit quicker because there are some questions? Yes, uh, I'm almost done. Um, so uh, the victories we are a great team dynamic diversified uh, lots of strengths in our team the members of the team are open-minded agile engaged and really work uh, together to create a positive environment we developed a working method uh, that uh, works for everybody the capsules the videos are validated and checked and rigorously and we uh, want to deliver a project that is original, a product that is original and uh, accessible to everybody that uh, connects VR and uh, uh, the real world and usable in the classroom setting. And also the different uh, resources at UVS, uh, the virtual care unit, we can use that in a pedagogical setting with the different scenarios that we see in virtual reality. There we go. So the debriefing at the end helps us it's an important element to make sense with the pedagogical objectives so uh, uh danielle thank you mano yes i have an important question to ask you 
Yes, uh, uh, the, virtual, the virtual care unit is attractive and pleasant, and, and uh, sh uh, studies show that uh, uh, people enjoy it and it's very useful and offers three modalities, uh, the uh, immersive VR, non-immersive EMR, and uh, video uh, uh, capsules. Video capsules uh, connect the real world and the virtual world, which gives uh, an original uh, uh, modality uh, for pedagogy that is flexible for healthcare uh, education in different uh, settings. And we really think that it will be a complementary tool that will allow us to uh, train uh, professional health uh, care people and, and different areas. Uh, so that... Uh, is the conclusion to our presentation today. If you have any questions about the uh, uh, virtual care unit, well, the webinars are 60 minutes and we really want to don't go over that. So we have two minutes to ask, uh, to respond to a question by Dominique Poirier. How can the student make a decision? Are there uh, multiple choice actions of actions? How does the student make decisions? The beauty of all of this is in the unit of care, all interactions are done with a tablet of an iPad type, but virtual. It's not a real iPad. The iPad is in the virtual reality, and all the interactions are done with this uh, virtual iPad. All the interactions are uh, in limited different to, uh, choices. All the different actions can be done in different ways. You can go to the patient, go to the monitor, you can take uh, the uh, blood pressure, all that is done with this virtual tablet uh, that uh, exists in the VR where the user has all their choices on the tablet. Sometimes we ask if things are evolving favorably or not, and then he has to make decisions. All actions are done with a virtual tablet. Thank you. Somebody was asking, can you repeat the name of the platform used for the activities in a virtual AI? Uh, I think these are the video capsules or the uh, video uh, videos on the REN page. Uh, um, so uh, EVS, a virtual care uh, unit, Unité Virtuelle de Soins, you will see the seven videos. There are three to come in the next couple of weeks. Uh, they will be on the page uh, there. So thank you, Manon, Danielle. It was very interesting, very enriching. I think people really appreciated uh, your presentation today. So I'll ask all of you to fill out the survey and I uh, will we will send you all the uh, information, all the uh, decks used during this presentation today. So thank you again, very inspiring and we will see you soon. I hope I will be able to meet you in person uh, uh, and thank you and uh, see you soon. Goodbye.